Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our patient management series. In this video, we're going to talk about epidemiology. So first, let's talk about public health. And public health is the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting physical health and efficiency through organized community efforts. So it's a great field in both medicine and dentistry. Epidemiology is essentially a branch of public health, and it's the study of the distribution and determinants of disease. So as part of these epidemiologic studies, there are certain measures or indices that are used in both clinical practice and used in the research literature as quantitative measurements to essentially measure the prevalence of disease in a population. So these are DMFT, gingival index, periodontal index, and simplified oral hygiene index. Now the board exam loves to ask about this. Now DMFT, which measures caries, is irreversible because caries is an irreversible process, as opposed to the other three, which are all reversible measures. So let's talk about each of these four in greater detail. The DMFT is a conventional method of defining dental caries in a population. So DMFT stands for decayed, missing, and filled permanent teeth as a result of tooth decay. DMFS is a modification of that, and this stands for decayed, missing, and filled surfaces, again, due to caries. And this is, once again, permanent teeth. Now we can modify this again, and it's DEFT this time, and this stands for decayed, extracted, and filled teeth. Again, permanent teeth due to the caries process. And once more, but this time let's use lowercase letters, so lowercase DMFT now stands for decayed, missing, and filled primary teeth as a result of caries. So we have a couple of modifications on the original. So if we use an E instead of an M, that means the tooth is indicated for extraction, or it has been extracted, as a consequence of caries. And using S for surface instead of tooth, is a more precise measurement because we're considering each and every surface instead of just the whole tooth. And then using lowercase letters instead of uppercase letters means we're talking about primary teeth. And once a tooth becomes decayed, missing, filled, or extracted, that damage and or treatment becomes irreversible. Hence why this measure is an irreversible measurement. Next, we have the gingival index, or the gingival score. And this one designates the amount of gingival inflammation based on swelling, redness, and presence or absence of bleeding upon gentle probing. So the gingival index we're going to be talking about uses four surfaces on six indicator teeth. That's one in every sextant of the mouth. Now there are other versions where you measure every single tooth, but we're going to be talking about the one that just uses six. So you would look at four surfaces of whichever six teeth you choose, and that would be the facial, mesial, distal, and lingual gingiva. And again, you're looking for swelling, redness, and bleeding. And your score would be zero if it's normal healthy gingiva, one for mild inflammation, two for moderate inflammation, and three for severe inflammation, usually presenting with ulcerated tissue with a tendency towards spontaneous bleeding. So you're going from low score, normal healthy, to a higher score, not as great. And we'll see this in the next slide as well. So the periodontal index is another reversible measure used in epidemiology studies. And there have been Many, there are many different periodontal indices that have been developed over time in an attempt to create a standardized system to use in epidemiology literature. But the truth is this field is always changing and there are always new 
classifications being created. But the one we're going to talk about and focus on for the board exam is the CPITN, which is Community Periodontal Index of Treatment Needs. And this is one of the simplest measuring tools to assess prevalence of periodontal disease in a population. So this periodontal score designates bleeding on probing, calculus, and probing pocket depth. So if we start from the lowest score, again, it's going to be healthy, normal tissue. One presents with bleeding. Two, we have calculus present. Three, shallow pockets. And four, deep pockets. But the American Academy of Periodontology doesn't particularly like this measure because it doesn't account for recession. So attachment loss is inaccurate because we know from our periodontic series that recession goes into that calculation for clinical attachment loss. And if we're not considering it, then we're not presenting the most accurate measure for assessing periodontal disease in a population. And lastly, we have the simplified oral hygiene index. And this one measures the amount of gross debris, which is the DI component, and the amount of calculus, which is the CI component. And so DI and CI added together results in the OHIS score. And so this measure is going to be assessing if the patient has good, fair, or poor oral hygiene. And of course, this one could be easily reversed if a patient improves their oral hygiene. So dentistry, if you think about it, really boils down to these three disease processes and how to prevent them. We have caries or tooth decay, which is the localized destruction of tooth tissue by bacteria and their byproducts. Periodontal disease, which falls under the umbrella of gum disease, is a group of lesions affecting the tissues surrounding and supporting teeth in their sockets. And lastly, we have oral cancer. So again, dentistry really does boil down to these three main disease processes. Early childhood caries was previously called baby bottle tooth decay, and it occurs in patients typically ages three to five, and it's defined as one or more DMFS, which we now, now know as decayed, missing, or filled smooth surfaces in any primary tooth. And this has to be between birth and 70, 71 months of age. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they have rampant caries on every single tooth. It's just that they occur early on in age, between birth and 71 months. The most common presentation involves the primary maxillary incisors and primary molars. And Early childhood caries, or ECC for short, impacts about 5% of U.S. infant and toddler population. And lastly, just a high-yield fact about oral cancer, the tongue is the most common site for cancers in the oral cavity. The board exam could simply ask a question about which is the most common site, so the tongue would be that answer. And cancer screening should be conducted at every dental exam. So every time the dentist comes to see you and checks your teeth, they should be also looking at the soft tissue to assess for the presence of pre or oral cancer. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out my Patreon page. A huge thank you to Michael Raja, Ainz Lau, David Jaden, Yannet, and all of my patrons for all their support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.